This is a fairly extensive remake of a video I made approximately seven years ago in which I performed the C major prelude from the first book of Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier using quarter comma mean tone temperament. The video was simply a performance of the piece without any sort of explanation concerning the suitability of this temperament for this prelude or Bach's music. Short answer, it's not suitable. So what I would like to do here is discuss this aspect of suitable temperaments and also offer a comparison by performing the same prelude in three different temperaments, namely quarter comma mean tone, Rameau, which is the temperament I tend to use quite a bit, and Kirnberger 3. And I will explain why I have chosen those three specifically. First, a little context. We use temperaments because if we tune pure major thirds and pure perfect fifths, that is, observing their actual mathematical ratios, we run into two problems simultaneously. Tuning major thirds pure results in octaves that are too narrow. Tuning perfect fifths pure results in the opposite problem, octaves that are too wide. So in order to have our octaves in tune, we have to modify or temper our thirds and fifths in some way. And if I were to simplify the situation a bit, and when it comes to discussing temperaments, I have to do some simplifying, otherwise this video will take several hours. One very difficult balancing act involves the kinds of sacrifices we're willing to make when tempering thirds and fifths versus the ability to play in all available tonalities. The three temperaments I have chosen to use in this video show three distinctive approaches. Quarter comma mean tone retains eight pure major thirds. The downside to having so many pure thirds is that the remaining four major thirds are very wide, and one fifth, usually the one between A flat and E flat, is impossibly wide because it's really a diminished sixth between G sharp and E flat. There are, by the way, no enharmonic equivalents in this temperament. There is only G sharp and not A flat, just like there's only E flat and not D sharp. So this strange fifth is called the wolf fifth. What all this means in practical terms is that while tonalities up to a couple of sharps and flats are not only playable, but also sound very beautiful. Tonalities with more accidentals are in many respects unplayable, and some don't even exist. While this can seem very limiting to us, as I have argued in previous videos, quarter comma mean tone also has several unique characteristics that once you become aware of their existence, it is very hard to live without them. This includes not only the beautiful major thirds and the harmonies they produce, but also the very distinctively beautiful chromatic scale, since semitones are far from equidistant. Also, if you're familiar with the more objectionable characteristics and know how to navigate through them, you can actually use them for expressive purposes or to add a temporary spice to the harmonic mix. This is, of course, what happens in a lot of 17th century repertory, which loses quite a lot of its color, as well as aspects of its expressive content, when we use temperaments that solve, so to speak, some of the issues associated with mean tone. Switching now to the Rameau temperament, you can think of it as a compromise between retaining the beauty of pure major thirds and allowing more flexibility when it comes to playable tonalities. 
four of the eight pure thirds are sacrificed, but in return the very wide thirds and the wolf fifth are now gone. This means that most tonalities are playable, with each tonality having very distinctive colors. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, this has become my favorite temperament, and I use it for the majority of the music I play. Of course, Bach's well-tempered clavier encompasses all tonalities, so we would probably run into trouble in at least a couple of preludes and fugues if we use the remote temperament. There's a myth out there, which unfortunately still seems to persist, that Bach wrote the well-tempered clavier to demonstrate the ability to play in every tonality through the use of equal temperament. This is absolutely not true because there is an entire category of unequal temperaments known as circulating or well temperaments, think well tempered clavier, that allow you to play in every tonality, but unlike equal temperament, these circulating temperaments have varying sizes of thirds and fifths so that each tonality has its own distinctive color or flavor, if you will, in contrast to the blandness of equal temperament where everything sounds the same. This type of circulating temperament is what Bach had in mind, although we don't know precisely which one he would have used or if indeed he had a specific one in mind. Normally, these circulating temperaments exhibit a different approach compared to quarter comma mean tone or rameau, in that there are various combinations of pure and impure perfect fifths, while thirds are not pure. In this regard, the Kirnberger III circulating temperament I will use in this video represents somewhat of an anomaly as it retains one pure major third between C and E. However, I think that this anomaly provides an interesting connection between the three temperaments I'm using as we go from eight pure major thirds to four and finally to one. Conveniently, all three temperaments share the pure major third from C to E. This means that the opening sonority of this prelude is going to be similar among all three temperaments before the colors of each harmony start diverging as the piece progresses. My decision to choose this particular prelude was based on two considerations. First, since it consists of arpeggiated chords, it works quite well in demonstrating the differences between temperaments, especially as you get the chance to hear every chord twice before moving on to the next one. Secondly, it is a great example of how Bach's harmonic thinking really does not work with quarter comma mean tone temperament, as even such a simple piece in the most basic tonality has a couple of sour moments. On the other hand, the vast majority of the harmonies work so beautifully that when I switched to a more correct temperament, I actually started missing some of that beauty. This is why I find the Rameau temperament ideal for this piece, because it retains much of the beauty of mean tone, but without any of the harmonies sounding out of place. Now, when I say all this, I am not advocating using mean tone for Bach. This prelude is in C major after all, so it's bound to work for the most part. Likewise, the Rameau temperament is not what Bach had in mind because it is not really a circulating temperament. But just in this prelude, I find that a circulating temperament sounds a little pedestrian coming after mean tone and Rameau. And although, again, I have to stress there is no historical justification for it, I like to use the Rameau temperament for Bach's music when I can get away with it, simply because I like its colors. 
As a matter of fact, I've used it in all of my previous Bach videos, so you can listen and see what you think. But for now, here is the first prelude in C major from the first book of The Well-Tempered Clavier. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the performances.